So stupid as we might look, we've been searching for a long time. I think we finally found the smart mine and the lost mine, one and the same, I guess, are very close by each other. Here's the snowplow turnaround, you can see it. This is apparently where you park, and the trail right over there. So let's hope we find the thing. What's wrong with the place? It's raining. So after a couple of hundred meters, the path forks. Here's the spot where you got a fork. You want to take the right fork. That's taking you up to the mine. And uh, we come into this clearing, and basically you can see the beginnings of trenches. Um, I can see a lot of calcite on the ground, which means there's a calcite filler, which definitely suggests a good amount of crystal growth. Big, well-formed crystals, there's your calcite. There's obviously the edge of a trench, so we're gonna kind of survey the area, see where our best options are. Look at the size of this book of mica. In other words, it's very large, slow-forming crystals. And the slower it forms in this sort of calcite matrix, the more impressive the finds that you're gonna have. But this is absolutely typical of these particular calcite veins and dikes around the Bancroft area. So this is the stuff they used in those cast iron stoves for the windows because it's heat resistant. Biotite mica. This is unreal. These are all feldspar crystals. Look at them. Look at the size of the things. Massive. Look at that. And that. Fantastic. So far I've found a bunch of, you know, red apatite crystals. A um, couple of feldspar crystals and I'm really finding it. I've just been digging in this little hole here. I've made a hole for myself. I've kind of gone into an undercut. I'm getting into a gritty area. They say the, the bigger crystals usually fall deepest in the trench. So I'll just keep going downwards for a while. It's kind of not a bad looking little piece of appetite. Kind of glassy green when it's clean. Jeff's just found a really nice green glassy piece. So I took a piece of advice from Alf, who I met a couple of days ago, who comes here once in a while. He said, check around the, the edges of these sort of trenches, and when you see what people have discarded or forgotten, you pretty well know what's inside the trench. And I did that, and almost everything I'm finding here, every shovel full is bringing up crystals of some type or another. found a pocket right there. You can just see the pocket where I can put my hand into. I can't see it because it keeps filling with water. It's obviously water trapped in there, but down the bottom you can feel all this sort of gravelly stuff and this is what it is. Crystals. So it's like a pocket. No one's been into it probably because of the water that keeps filling it up. So I'm going to blindly explore with my hand, see what I can haul out. What do you Check out what Jeff's just found. Okay, he's digging in this spot here. He's just found a beautiful piece of striped looking appetite. Absolutely beautiful. He's found some big green, green ones. Yeah, this is pretty similar to Bear Lake, uh, except for I'm finding it way better, and um, it's pretty much, um, you know, Bear Lake, in my experience, has been somewhat picked out. But this is just phenomenal. There's lovely red appetites all over the place, green appetites mixed in with it, all sorts of feldspar crystals of significant size. There's a lot going on here. It's it's really good. So that's red appetite right there. That, that pillar sticking out. It's just discovery. Just enormous. Look at that bad boy. Look at him. It's huge. Impressive looking crystal. There's another one underneath there which you gotta clean up. So here's some crystals in there. Natural habitat. Sadly, not removable by me. You don't want to start hacking the crystals if you can't take them off properly. So there they are. Someone will get them sooner or later. Hopefully remove them properly. Big uh, logs of red appetite as well. I mean, you can just see ends of the, of the actual prisms as they call them. I believe that's a hexagonal crystal. Um, there we go, there's some nice, uh, nice appetite in the wall. All right. Right there, beautiful. Guys, this is this is the actual primo find of the day. Jeff's got titanite. Look at this. Beautiful, lustrous titanite. Titanium, calcium, uh, sometimes uh, with silicate and sometimes has very uh, rare earths mixed in. Ur ureterium, cerium, 
and uh, sometimes thorium replacing the calcium. So that's tight. I bought them here in a half-hearted way and uh, look at them now you can't stop storms coming he's still going at it there's some of the goodies that he's found look at them all various appetite crystals oh lovely lovely titanite look at that beautiful specimen and Phil spark crystal so these mines uh, in which you find uh, large books of mica uh, feldspar Titanite, Appetite, uh, and uh, I'm sure I've missed something, I'll remember it in a minute. Basically what happened is they've been through a number of, oh excuse me, radioactives. They've been through a number of um, life cycles. 1950s radioactives, of course they were mining them, beginning of, of, the, of the nuclear age. Uh, phosphorus was used way back turn of the century or even a little bit before for fertilizer. They used the mica for heat resistant shields and stoves and so forth so that you could actually look through, you know, like the windows and an old cast iron stove. Uh, Titanite is just a collector's specimen. You can basically, I, I met a guy who was working at Bear Lake digging out the Titanite and uh, basically he was paying his trip to Eider Oberstein in Germany from the Titanites that he would find in one weekend of digging. Beautiful, lustrous. I've got a, I took a picture of one a little earlier today. So the mines have been through a number of life cycles and now it's the life cycle of the rockhound who comes to, go to get collector specimens. So um, this particular mine, the smart mine, well worth a visit. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot here that a collector can, can gather. It's coming back from the uh, smart mine. What a beautiful area. They always have a big road like this and you can always tell where it, when it leads to a mine by the gravel that's on the road itself. Not so much the round rocks, but you always get this crushed feldspar on the road. It pretty well tells you it's coming from a mine. At least that's been my experience.